Okay, today I want to talk about how to build this cable terminator using Design Magic and the Metashape add-on. The image you see here was created in Design Magic. The materials are from the EV material system, which actually will be renamed to be more of a universal material system because all the EV materials now work in cycle. And then of course the cables are part of the dynamic cable collection. What I want to go over is the specific ways you can use parametric modeling and Design Magic to quickly create something as complex as this cable connector. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to create this junction box and I'm going to use this particular solid. And the first thing I do is I'm going to re remove the kit ops props. So that means I can add other kit ops objects to it. And now I'll just proportion it. Now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking I want to add a kind of a three connector port on each side of this box. And I'll show you, you'll, you'll see what I mean later on as I start to, to create this. One of the things I'm doing is I'm control A and setting the scale every time I move it, just because I know this is my original object and I wanna make sure that I have the scale set correctly. And because this box is, uh, has its own modifiers, I can adjust that bevel. Now I'm adding these connectors I told you about. And one of the nice things about kit ops is once you add one and size it, you can actually add the others and they'll come in at the same size. And I've set it so that I'm snapping to the center of an edge. And so that's how I'm getting this. And then I'm moving this through, I'm thinking about how I want to do this. I eventually decide I'll just go ahead and mirror it. And uh, I'm going to extend it a little farther than necessary though, because I want to come through and shear off those ends with another Boolean. So here are my three main connector areas. And now I'm going to insert the holes for those areas. Now these holes are not going to be part of the meta shape. They're going to be added later after we create the meta shape. And so we'll show you how I do that in just a minute. So now I'm looking at trying to figure out exactly what I want to do about this other side. And I'm thinking, well, do I want to add some more detail? And I finally decide, yeah, I do. I'm going to add this this kind of a box. When I add it, I realize, oops, the radius is going the wrong way. Grab the other box and put it there. So there we have it. And I'll move it in here. And once I've got this kind of lined out the way I want, let's go ahead and add a mirror modifier and make sure I bisect it. And now by bisecting it, I make sure I'm going to get this to be a totally manifold object, which means it's a complete solid. So now I'm looking at it and thinking, okay, that's pretty good. I'm not crazy about that particular part sticking out. So I'll just drag that in a little bit and this out a little more. And now I'm playing with that center piece to see exactly how I want that to look. And I keep playing around with it and finally come up with something that I think is going to kind of work for me. So that's my main shape. That's the shape that I'm going to use as kind of my die cast soft meta shape form. So let's go ahead now and add some holes, kind of some holes that we'll use to put some screw heads in or bolts or something like that. So once I've done that, I'll just mirror them using KitOps mirror tool. And then I realize that oh, we're not symmetrical about the Y axis. So let's turn that one off and we'll go ahead and add another one. And remember that KitOps remembers the last scale that you inserted something at. And here I'm trying to figure out why it's not snapping. And then I realize, oops, my snap is not to center. And then I hit the C key, now it snaps to center and I'm perfect. And I've got the same exact hole. So I'll move that in and we're good. So I'll power save it. And now as I'm looking through this, I'm gonna say, let's turn off all of the objects that I don't want to meta shape. Now notice that we had a problem there when I started doing that and I had to go in and turn, set the booleans to exact so I get it right. Here I am now meta shaping it and I'm adjusting the settings trying to get something that I think I'm going to like. And I think we're in pretty good shape there. That looks like something that will work. Now I'm going to turn it back off and start adding more details. It's always easier to add the details before I go ahead and convert to mesh the meta shape. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll go here and I'm going to add a little bit of a cutting plane here in this surface right here. So 
Sometimes as I'm doing this, and I know I want something thin, instead of scaling it, I'll just go into the info, info dialog, like right there, and I'll just change that to something really tiny there, and it just works a little better. Plus, it's something I know that I'm gonna be using that same kind of cutting uh, dimension elsewhere. Now I'm basically going in and making sure these holes don't cut all the way through. I want them to cut through partially. And that's exactly what they're doing. Now once that's done, we go ahead and do the meta shape and we take a look at it and say, okay, is that gonna be right? And uh, I'm gonna add another cutter here at the front so I can cut off that piece really good. And I'll turn these off and uh, meta shape it. And now they'll cut, be cut off after I convert this whole thing to a mesh. Now I'm playing around with the voxel sizes and the smoothing of the meta shape just to try and make sure I get it. And I notice I'm getting a few artifacts. I keep looking at this and, hmm, how do I fix that? And I know how I'm, I'm gonna eventually fix it, but I first tried jacking up the resolution, but even jacking up the resolution doesn't fix it. And I could actually add a bevel to that edge uh, would be one way to fix it. But I've decided after looking at it a little more that I think I'm gonna go ahead and meta shape it and then convert it to a mesh and then meta shape it again. And that's gonna give us a really nice surface once we're done. So let's show you how that works. Once I've got this done and I've finished playing around with the actual settings that I want, and that's what I'm doing here. I keep modifying the smoothness value, trying to come up with something that I think I'm gonna like. And then we'll go into Kit Ops and we'll say convert to mesh. Now that's gonna remove all of the other inserts for that modifier, which uh, is one way of doing it. I could have just gone in and applied each one individually, but that's fine. We're gonna look at this now, and now we're looking at it and we're saying, okay, let's let's do this. Let's add another meta shape to it. So I'm looking at it, and I would say add meta shape, and when I do that, it gets really soft fast. So I'm gonna hit this more button, and let's go ahead and adjust the smoothness. Now I've got something that's really pretty nice. I've got it very, very smooth. And I'll go back into Kit Ops again once I have this set the way I want. And I'll convert it to mesh again. Now it's a simple matter to take these existing, the, the uh, existing inserts I added and just use the target object feature of Kit Ops to go ahead and re-add them back onto this mesh. So that's exactly what I'm doing here is I'm just adding all of these cutters back onto this mesh in the modifier list. So there we have it. And as you can see, uh, I am actually uh, having to go back in and mirror a couple of them that weren't mirrored previously. And so once I have that done, I'm gonna take those holes and cut through in there. Now notice I did turn off my viewport viz for all those modifiers when I was moving those around because that would be a heavy Boolean object and it's easier to move things with the viewport viz turned off and that's uh, one of the modifier tools which is a free add-on that comes with blender so now what I'm doing is I'm gonna add a, a little bit of a cutter around there I've added three of these and they just snap to the face on the inside of, of it and then I turned viewport viz off and now I'm just gonna scale these cutters they're gonna be it's a little ring cutter that I'm gonna use so I'm gonna scale these and remember we talked about using that point one, uh, that's what I'm doing. But before I do that, I'm gonna actually apply the rotation because that way I know what direction I'm scaling things in. So there's my point, oops, dimensions point one, point one, and point oh one. And so that basically gets all those to be the same, exactly the same parting line thickness as the previous one that we created. And there we have it. So now with that done, let's go ahead and adjust these so these cut into it a little bit. You can see these have a solidify, and so they're actually cutting into it. So when I look at this, you can see that we're cutting that nice little ridge inside the back end of that. And they all look good. And now I'm mirroring them on the other side. Let's take a look at that. So that looks really, really good. Let's go ahead and apply a, a material to it, like a steel. There we go. And now you can see that's 
pretty much what we have. So I'm going to interrupt this real quick and just explain something. And that is that I want you to understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So by taking a soft form and then cutting it up with harsh cutters or adding harsh booleans to it, you're actually able to contrast the soft forms with the hard forms and create a much more interesting shape. And that's one of the nice things about this workflow. And the other thing, of course, is that in the manufacturing process, you will typically get die cast shapes, which are very soft. And then they'll come back in and they'll machine out the parts that are critical from a dimensional standpoint. And so that's exactly how a connector like this might be made. So I just wanted to let you understand the reason why I'm going through this exercise from a design perspective. One of the things we like, now I wanna add a bevel to the outside edge there. And so basically I'm gonna convert everything to mesh, remove unused inserts, and I'll look at that. Maybe before I do that, let's go ahead and add a hex bolt onto here. So again, we'll go to this view right here and we'll set snapping to face. We just drag it, size it, click, drag, drag it to the next one. And then this one I'm gonna to have to play around with size a little bit different because it's, it's somewhat uh, smaller. So I'll do that later on. I'll come in and I'll, I'll fix these. So once that's done, I will go ahead and mirror each one of these again to the other side of the connector. And now I'm going to take and I'm going to look at this and say, OK, how do I get a bevel on here? So I'll select all these faces and I'll Alt E and use extrude face along normals and I'll pull them out a little bit about as far as I want that bevel to be something like probably there and now I'm going to select the boundary of each of those faces so that'll select the edges that are the boundary so that's good and then I'll set it to individual origin the actual scale and then I'll hit the S key and I'll scale everything down and you can see that worked pretty good except the inside interior circles the interior uh, edges also scaled in, inward, which we didn't want. So I'm going to go ahead and select those. And with those selected, I'll do the same thing, hit the scale button, and I'll make those a little larger so they match the other one. And now when you tab into this and look at it, see that we have a real nice bevel there. Okay, now let's go ahead and what I want to do is with these guys, I'm going to just adjust them so that the, the so that the heads of the bolts are sticking out a little bit. So here we go. You can see that. And I'm going to use that same trick that we did before where I actually apply the rotation there. And then I'll grab that X location X and go to this other one here and apply the rotation and then just paste the X in there. And that's good. So that worked perfect. And this one, I'll again move it out a little bit. This one, I can see that I've got, I don't really want that hole. I just want the bolt. So I'm going to go in and turn off smart mode so I can select just the cutter on that and then delete it. And we're in good shape. Now, I should do that for this other two, but I forgot to when I, uh, rem so when I uh, basically go in here and convert to mesh, and removed inserts, it's gonna, since they're parented, those inserts are gonna go flying out, which is not what I want. So I just need to go in and delete the, uh, the cutters there and I'm in good shape. So, so now I'm just gonna go in and rotate a few of these so that they're not quite exactly the same as we might see. And now I've pretty much got a finished cable connector. And so the next thing I wanna do is create the insert. So to create the insert, I need, either need to parent these bolts to the original object, or in this case, I just control J joined them into the original object. Then I rotated this and uh, set it so that it sat on the ground and applied my rotation. And then I hit apply all transformations and that will actually make sure that the center is correct and the scale is correct. And then I save it and then I camera to insert it and uh, position what I want and then render the thumbnail. And really, that's it. And that's the process that we use Design Magic to help us create a cable connector. Just so you know, this video was recorded and then played back at 2x. Well, thanks for watching. 
and we'll see you online.